We've been looking at symmetry properties of signals, things like even and odd in the case of real signals and conjugate symmetric signals in the case of complex valued signals. Now let's take a look at a handful of properties that are useful when dealing with even and odd signals. This list right here of properties, what happens if I add two even signals together? What happens if I add two odd signals together? Things like that. If we add two even signals together, the result of that sum is itself an even signal. Adding two odd signals results in an odd signal, and you can keep reading down the list here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly work through each one of these with a small proof and establish these results, and then we'll kind of know these facts moving forward, and we can just kind of use these as needed. So let's go ahead and work through some of these proofs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have kind of a collection of even signals, so xi for you know i equals you know, one, two, three, et cetera. So every signal from this group of signals, X, I of T is even, so it satisfies the definition of an even signal. X, I of T is equal to X, I at time negative T, okay? And that is true, obviously, for all time. And, you know, let I be one, two, three, I just kind of have a batch of even signals. Similarly, we'll let Y, I be a collection of odd signals. So that means that every signal, si signal Y, I of T, is equal to the negative of the time reversed yi of t for all time. So y's are always odd in the work to follow. So the first thing we wanna do is add together two even signals. So xi plus xj, two even signals I've kind of grabbed from my batch of even signals, adding them up to yield z of t. Is this an even signal or an odd signal? Well, let's check. Let's actually compute the time reversed version of z of t which means xi at minus t and xj at minus t. But remember, this is an even signal and this is an even signal, so that's just equal to xi of t and xj of t, but this is equal to z of t. So we've shown that z of t is equal to z of minus t, so this is indeed an even signal. A sum of even signals is even. All right, next one. z of t is y of t plus y i of t plus y j of t. We're going to add together two odd signals. Does z of t have any nice properties? Well, let's see. Let's compute z at minus time. So that's y at minus time, y j at minus time. But remember, y i and y j are both odds. This is minus y i of t, minus y j of t. And then look, I have a negative sign here on both terms. I can factor out and write that as y i of t plus y j of t. And look what's inside right here. That's just z of t. So this is equal to the negative of z of t. So since time reversed z of t is equal to the negative of z of t, this must be an odd signal. So a sum of odd signals is itself an odd signal. All right, a few more. We'll go a little quicker here. The strategy is exactly the same. What happens if I add an even to an odd? Well, let's compute z of minus t. That gives me xi of minus t, yj of minus t. xi is even, so that is just equal to xi of t. yj is odd, so I get the minus sign. And notice, this is not equal to z of t, so it's not even. It's also not equal to the negative of z of t, so it's not odd. So if I have an odd signal plus an even signal and add them up, I get neither, which isn't too surprising. Number four. If I take an even signal times an even signal, well, z of minus t is xi of minus t, xj of minus t. These are both even, so that's just equal to themselves, xi of t, xj of t, which is equal to z of t. So z of t equaling z of minus t means this is an even signal. So a product of even signals always results in an even signal. Number five, let's take a product of odd signals. Same strategy here. That's a negative of y of t because this is an odd signal. That's a negative yj of t because this is odd. A negative times a negative is positive, so I end up with yi of t, yj of t. And this is z of t, so that's interesting. z of t is equal to z of minus t, so this is an even signal. So a product of odd signals actually gives me an even signal. So product of odd is an even signal. So that one's the, really the kind of the only surprising one in this list so far. Everything kind of makes sense and be what you almost would guess initially. Final one. 
what happens if I take a product of an even and an odd? So z of minus t, xi of minus t, yj of minus t, x is even, y is odd, so we get a minus sign. This is a negative xiyj, which is a negative z of t, which means a product of an even and an odd is odd. Okay, So we now have these facts as we work different problems and we're trying to determine if a kind of a composite signal comprised of sums or products or things like that has some of these symmetry properties. Knowing some of these facts is just kind of a, a nice thing to know. So that wraps up kind of a small sequence on kind of symmetry properties, even, odd, conjugate, symmetric. In the next video, we'll move on to the next item in our list discussing signal properties, signal classification is what we're calling it, and we'll talk about periodic and non-periodic continuous time signals and discrete time signals.